and we're going to start at the fifth verse. I'm going to read 5a, and uh, we will um, teach the context that leads up to uh, the text that I'm getting ready to read. All right? All right? Amen. And good, ev good evening to everyone who's coming in. All right? All right, we're getting ready to start. All right, so I want you to see Isaiah 43, 5, right? I'm going to read uh, the first part of the fifth verse. And this is what it says. Listen to what it says. It says, do not be afraid. I am with you. Do not be afraid. I am with you. That says a lot. And this is coming um, from God through the prophet Isaiah. Isaiah is speaking on the behalf of uh, the Lord. And I want you to hear what the Lord is telling him to speak to uh, Israel. And technically, um, if we're going to contemporize the text, he's really speaking to us because the word of God applies to us in this disp uh, dispensation. All right. So I'm going to read it again. Do not be afraid. I am with you. Somebody needed to hear that tonight. Somebody needed to hear that right there. If I, if I, if I just, you know, said the benediction and shut the teaching down, that, that's really what you needed to hear. Somebody got some confirmation by what I just spoke by telling you that you need not to be afraid. God is with you. God is with you. I'm going to talk uh, a little bit or teach a little bit I reference uh, a topic entitled, You Are Not In This Alone. You are not in this alone. All right? You are not in this alone. Th this is a word that somebody needs on tonight. And I'm telling you, you are not in this alone. Father, I thank you so much for what you've given me by way of revelation and interpretation of the the text that you have given me on tonight, you you knew, you knew who needed to hear this. You knew it, and that's why you put it in my heart to share uh, this word that you've given me for tonight. I pray that everyone who would tune in, that they would hear your heart and, and perhaps garner from what they hear tonight to be a blessing, a source of direction and guidance and confirmation uh, that they need not to fear because they need to know that you are with them. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, back pedal, back pedal, back pedal, back to the first verse. We're going to start at the first verse and then we'll, we'll go into um, uh, the text that I read. All right. I, I want you to see this because it was um, Isaiah that said Israel. Israel, the Lord who created you, says, do not be afraid. I will save you. I will save you. Now, we just read in the fifth verse that the Lord is saying, do not be afraid. I am with you. We see in the first verse that Isaiah says to Israel, God's people, he says that the Lord, your God says, do not be afraid, I will save you. And so we, we, we need to know what's going on in the mind of God, reference to why he feels Israel needs to hear the words that he is speaking through the prophet Isaiah, all right? All right, so, so get your notes, let's, let's take notes. So listen to this, this, this is what um, Isaiah is saying to the people of God. He says, Israel, the Lord who created you says, the Lord who created you says, and this is what he says, do not be afraid. I will save you. Okay, so let's break this down. When he says, Israel, the Lord who created you says, when you hear that quote from, from Isaiah, uh, the Lord 
who created you says. It means we have a God that speaks. It's a God, we have a God that talks. So I, I, I don't want to rush past uh, what I just read in, in verse one without you understanding what is being implied by Isaiah when he says Israel, and he's talking to the church. He's talking to the church. And you are the modern day Israel. We are the modern day Israel. Israel, the Lord who created you says. And what is that applying again? Is that we serve a God that talks. He speaks. He says things. You see. And that's crucial for you to know that you have a God that communicates with his mouth. All right. Now, when you see this statement, the Lord who created you says, I want you to understand that this is the basis for all things created. You have to see what is being implied here. It's not just saying that we have a God that speaks, but when you hear the phrase, the Lord who created, created you says, Understand that this is the basis for all things created. Watch this. The Lord and what he says is the reason you exist. The Lord and what he says is the reason you exist. This is why Isaiah is saying, don't forget, he's not just your Lord and he speaks, but, but he is a creator. In fact, he created you. And your existence is really linked to the Lord and everything he said about humanity, right? Okay, why am I saying this? Is because if you read Genesis, you'll understand that the, it was the Lord who spoke you and I into existence. Okay, all right. So the Lord who spoke us into existence has something to say, watch this, about the details of our lives with that same mouth. That same mouth that created everything that we see around us and even hum humanity, which is us, He's using that same mouth to give us some details about the lives that we are experiencing right now. It's that same mouth, that same mouth, okay? So when he says, Lord, uh, the Lord who created you, okay, he's talking about the Lord who speaks, and then he's talking about the fact that um, the reason why we exist, the reason why we were created, because of what he had spoken, right? Okay, so that same mouth has something to say about the details concerning your life, your life, okay? So let's be clear. Let's be clear before we go to anything else. You are here because God said, watch this, let us make man and you became. You became, when as soon as he said, let us make man, you became, you became. So remember now, you're here because God said, let us make man. When he said, let, let us make man, you became. So what God says becomes. I need you to hear what Isaiah is trying to establish before he goes to any goes goes to anything else in this context that's going to lead up to the text, what God says becomes. Whatever he says out of his mouth, it will becomes, right? Become. So this is the thing. So we understand that we serve a God that speaks. Whenever he speaks, whatever he says, it becomes. We understand that that's truth because of what we read in Genesis. Everything that we see around us was spoken into existence. That same mouth, that same mouth, that same mouth is working for us today. Okay, because whatever he says, it becomes. Am I right? Then the other thing it teaches us 
it also teaches us that what we create is directly linked to the things that we say. I'm going to say that again. It also teaches us, besides all the things I've already mentioned, it, all, it also teaches us that what we create is linked, directly linked to the things, okay, that we say out of our mouths, okay? All right, so what we create will be determined what we declare, what we say, okay? So what Isaiah is trying to establish going forward, everything that we are going to talk about that's directly linked to our lives has something to do with what comes out of the mouth of God and what comes out of the mouths of the people that he created. Okay, now I want you to read First uh, Kings three twelve. We dealt with that Sunday. Okay, now this is coming out in the New King James. If you read First uh, uh, Kings three twelve, you you'll see that God is talking to Solomon. He tells Solomon, "Behold, I have done according to your words. Your your words, your words, your words will." manifest, okay, when you begin to declare certain things that either you need for your life, things you want to um, remove for your life, things you want to create uh, for your life, your words will cause those things to manifest. So, so God says, tell me what you want. Tell me what you want to do. Tell me what 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 you where you need to go what it is that you need for your life i will do everything according to your words read it in first kings 312 behold i have done according to your words okay so i i'm I, before we get off uh before we finish this teaching tonight i want to teach you how to be careful as to what you allow to come out of your mouth especially when you're going through a stressful time. Because the enemy knows that you create what it is that you see, okay, in real time with the words that comes out of your mouth because God says, Let's, let, let us make man in our own image and in our own likeness. Okay, so just like God creates with his words, then if we're going to be like God, we create things with our words. And God says, I will do what it is that you decree and declare out of your mouth. Okay? So, so everything that we get ready to talk about, okay, the only way these things are going to come to pass, you have to understand what God does. What he manifests and what he brings to pass are the things that we declare out of our mouths because he made us like him and we see that everything that was created in genesis was really linked to the mouth of god you see all right so keep that um in mind as we go through this text right so he says he says do not be afraid i will save you this came out of the mouth of God. He says, do not be afraid, and here's why. I'm going to save you, and here's why. I'm going to save you, I'm going to rescue, and, and here's why. Number one, I don't want you to be afraid, number one, and I just said that because I will save you. That's number one. I'm going to save you, right? Number two, I have called you by name. And number three, you are mine. He says, do not be afraid out of the mouth of God. Do not be afraid. I will save you, number one. I have called you by name, number two. You are mine. Out of the mouth of God. So hear what God says. He says, this is why you don't have to be afraid. Okay? Number one, when he says, I will save you, he says, I'm going to rescue you. I, I'm, I'm going I'm to rescue you. 
regardless of what you're going through and what you are experiencing right now, I will rescue you. And somebody on uh, this uh, live in the cyber sanctuary tonight knows God as a rescuer because he has rescued you and me out of so many things. You know why he did it? Because he said he was going to do it. That's that. See, when people start doubting what it is that I'm declaring, I, begin, I decree and declare what I hear my creator declare because I got to be like him. So when he says he's going to do something and I'm asked, well, how do you know? It's because he said it. It's because he said it. So if I find myself in a situation and I need to be rescued, I know who's going to rescue me out of it. And why do I know? It's because he said it. And I don't have to be afraid. I don't have to be afraid. I don't. Okay. Now I'm going to deal with the fear when we get to the text. All right. I'm going to explain that. All right. So he says, here's why you don't have to be afraid. I will save you. What does, what does that mean? I'm going to rescue you. Then he says, and the second reason you don't have to be afraid is because I have called you by name, meaning I know you. I know you. I know you better than you know yourself because I'm the one who created you. And this, this doesn't slight anybody else who knows you, but nobody knows you like I know you. I know what you need. I know what you're going through. I know how you feel. I know your proclivities. I know everything about you. I know you. I know you. I know you. That's why you don't have to be afraid because I know everything about you and I'm still interested in you. It's nothing that you can tell me. It's nothing that you can hide from me. It's, it's nothing that... You know, you, you, you can you can be secretive about I know everything about you. Don't be afraid because of what it is that you know that others may not know. And it, it may cause you to have some trepidation about, you know, where where I stand with with you. The Lord says, don't be afraid because none of that's going to break us up. None of that is going to cause me to leave you hanging. None of that. I know you. I know you, and despite all of your frailties and all of your uh, proclivities and all the mistakes that you have made, I want you to know that I'm still your God, and I'm going to be there for you. Don't ever be afraid. Don't ever be afraid about whether or not I'm, I'm going to be there for you based on what I know about you. If that was the case, I would have never come into a relationship with you. Don't be afraid. Other people may cause you to fear because you don't know how they're going to respond to what they may find out. But I already know what they're trying to find out. And I'm telling you, don't be afraid. And here's why I'm going to save you. And because I call you by name, by your name, I know your name. I know your name. And whenever I need to get your attention, I'll call your name, right? Because I know you. And then thirdly, he says, um, you are mine. You are mine. What does that mean? Don't be afraid because I'm going to rescue you. I know you and you belong to me. I, I, see, I see right there. I almost left the frame. I almost ran. I, I, I almost ran. I'm going to stay right here, though. I, you belong to me. <laughs> You're mine. You are mine. I'm responsible for you. I got you. You belong to me to me you are mine and once you get that in your spirit and you know who you belong to who you belong to because god knows who belongs to him once you get that in your spirit fear does not have a chance to defeat you you don't have to be scared about what's going on in this world what's going on in your personal life you don't have to be scared about what what people may be doing against you opposition the enemies hated that it doesn't even matter when you know that God said, when you know God said it, he said that you don't have to be afraid. And here's why I'm going to rescue you. I know you and you belong to me. Go to sleep. Get some good sleep tonight because the God that we serve, once he says something, it becomes. It already is. You see, and you have to keep convincing yourself and keep telling yourself, I don't have to be afraid. You know why? Because he, my God will rescue me. He knows me 
And not only that, I belong to him. Why? Because he said it. And you have to know what he said in order for you to be confident in what it is that you know you have at your disposal. Right? Okay? Right? So he says, this is the thing. And two, okay, so we, we establish it. All right? We know about um, how vital it is. For us to understand that when God says something, it becomes Genesis, right? We talked about that, right? We want to be like him. And he says, I made man and, 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 and let's make man in our own image and likeness. So we have to be like him. If he creates by what he speaks, then we have to understand that we create things based on what we speak. We understand now, okay, we got that. Now let's deal with the fear. Don't be afraid. Why? Three things. Why? You should get this in your spirit. Why? Because he's going to rescue me. He knows me and I belong to him. That's it. Well, how do you know that? Because he said it. Established. We're done with that. That's a done deal. Amen. Let the church say amen on that part. All right. Now we can flow into um, the text. Let's go into some more context and we'll flow into the text. I had to establish, establish that in my introduction because you got to get that in your spirit. You got to get that in your spirit. And some of you will have to go over this uh, teaching over and over again until you get in your spirit until fear will never, no longer become a problem. No, no longer become a problem. Okay? So let's go to verse 2. This is what he says. This is what God is saying. Remember, this is what the Lord is saying. When you pass through deep waters, I will be with you. Lord, help me here. Whew. He says, when you pass through deep waters, I will be with you, right? Okay, now get this. I, we established the introduction. We got, we got that right. So therefore, there's nothing you can get through. There's nothing you can't get through. There's nothing you can't get through. What, 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 what the Lord is saying, I'm not getting through it for you, but I will go through it with you. I need that to sink right into your spirit. He said, I'm not going to go through it for you. I'm going to go through it with you. Are you with me? Okay, so what? So this is what you have to get in your mindset because there are some things that you're going to go through that nobody else can go through. Nobody else can go through. And I want to talk to people who know that you're going through something right now that nobody around you have ever gone through, have ever gone through. And so you know literally, you know literally and rationally that nobody can go through what you're going through for you. But there are some people that God will put in your life that will go through it with you. Okay? And this is what God is teaching you. You're going to go through it. I can't go through it for you, but I will go through it with you. And why would he do that? Watch this. He's going to show you something. I'm glad you tuned in tonight. God says, I will show you what you can get through when I'm in it with you. Lord, help me. I'm going to show you what you can get through when I'm in it with you. You see? So you have to understand uh, that the topic tonight is you're not in this alone. And God says, I'm going to show it. He said, when I speak something, then the next thing I'm going to do is show you that when I say something, when I speak something over your, your life, I'm not a God that I can lie. And, and listen, I would never have to. I would never have to repent for something that I told you and I did not come through. So I'm not the son of man that I would ever have to repent because I'm going to show you. And I know it's tough right now, but I'm going to show you. I know it's painful right now, but I'm getting ready to show you something. I know it's troubling right now, but I'm ready to show you something. I know you think you can't make it. I know you think you've gone the last mile of the way. 
I know you're trembling and you're, you're, you're nervous, you're uncertain, you, 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 you just you have trepidation, but God says, I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you what you can get through when I'm in it with you. And these are the people I'm coming for right now because we're in some troubling times. There are a lot of people going through a whole lot of things that nobody else can go through for them. But I come to tell you, though nobody else can go through it for you, you got a God that will go through it with you. And you have some people that God was sent in your life to help you get through what it is that you're going through. You, you'd be surprised who God will use to help you get through the things that you got to go through. Like, do I have five people in here who know, who know that there's some stuff that if you had, an, if you had a choice, you would have, you would check out right now. I'm, I mean, can I, I mean, can I, can I come out? If I can, do I have some people who who who, are, who can say tonight, God, just if, just let me out, like change the whole situation. Let me, you know, I don't I don't really want to go through this. So if if I had an opportunity to get out of some things, I wouldn't go through this. You think I'm? You think I just chose this? No, no, I, I no way I would select the stuff I'm going through right now. It's no way in the world I would have selected this. No way. No way I would, I would have chosen this kind of test, this kind of issue, this kind of dilemma. No, you couldn't have told me at the beginning of this year that I would be going through this. No way. No way. This, this was the thing. This thing was, what I'm going through right now, it didn't even cross my mind. But I find myself in it. I'm going to talk to two people, maybe two people, that said there are some things you just can't say I'm out. You just can't say I'm out. There's some things you got to figure out. I'm going I'm to stop right here. Uh, maybe five people. Maybe I have five people on here who says there's some things I just can't say I'm out. Like you just can't say I'm out. There's some things I have to figure. I have to figure out. And I come to let you know there's a little bit more to that right there. That while you're trying to figure it out, I, do, I wish I had six. I wish I had about 10 people on that part. The God we serve has already worked it out. Hallelujah. I, I feel like giving God praise on that part because I, I promise you, I want to say I'm out, but, but I can't say I'm out. I have to figure it out. But I'm getting a word tonight that while I'm trying to figure it out, God has already worked it out. And how do I know? It's because he said it. And the fact that he's with me, I know this thing. I know this thing. When I tell you, if I was scared, if I did have some trepidation, thank God for his word because he said, he told me I don't have to be afraid because when I go through deep waters, hallelujah, I will be with you. And this is what I came to tell somebody tonight. You are not in this alone. God is with you. How do you know, Reverend? Because he said it. Because he said it. Because he said that he's right there in your living room. He's right there in your kitchen. If you're driving, he's right there in your car. If you're in trouble, he's a very present help. I wish I had two on that part. In the time of trouble. He said, I will be with you. I'll be with you. I'll be with you. When you pass through deep waters, I will be hallelujah, with you right? Now, let's talk about deep waters, right? Deep waters has the potential to drown you. Now, you can swim. You can swim. If you can swim and stay above, that's fine. But all that water up, up, up under you is just telling you that if something go wrong, if you know how to keep them feet pedaling and you don't know how to keep it moving, if you don't know how to stay above water, the, the water is telling you deep water now, shallow, anybody can handle that because you, 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 you got ground. But when there's nothing under you, I wish I had, I, I, see, when there's nothing under you and, and the bottom is real, real deep, that thing has the potential to drown you, right? Let, let, me, let, me, let me see if I get somebody who can relate to me. See, see, you can't relate to this in terms of what I'm teaching you right now unless you've been through something that has the potential to take you out of here.
See, if you've never gone through something like that, where you couldn't get your footing, you everything under you was deep, and and you had to scratch and you had to crawl, you you had to use everything you had to stay above it. See, you don't know what I'm talking about. If you have never gone through something that 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 was so deep, it had the potential to take you up out of here, then you, you can go ahead and. And you don't have to really listen to that part, but I'm going to talk to people who know uh, you've been in deep waters, deep waters. I mean, something deep that had the potential to drown you, to take you out of here. I wish I had somebody. See, you can't you can't relate unless you've been through something like that. And when you in something like that, the goal is to get through it without sinking to its lowest place, right? Get through it without sinking to its lowest place because it's deep, deep waters, man. It just, it's, it's so far down. You know, when you're going that far down, you're in trouble. Oh, you're in trouble when you're going that far down. When something, when something is so deep, you start sinking to its lowest point and it's real, real low. And I want to talk to people who know that you've been real, real low. I mean, sinking, sinking, just going down because of the cares of life. And see, this happens when you are experiencing low moments. Watch this while trying to get through troubled waters. And I don't know if I'm talking to somebody who's having a low moment, but you're still trying to get through. Do I have two people who say, I've, I've had low, mo low moments, but I... I I, I I did everything I could to get through. In fact, I'm having a low moment right now, but I'm I'm doing everything I can to to to, to get through. Low moments. I know you're saved, but you're gonna have some low moments. I know you love the Lord, but you will have some low moments. I know you've been saved all your life, but I'm trying to tell you. I know you you saved, sanctified. I, I I got all that, but you will keep living. You will have some yeah low moments because every now and then the waters are troubled the waters are troubled and why why do i say that because look at what the lord says when you pass through the waters i will be with you your troubles will not overwhelm you okay so he's talking about waters that are troubled Lives that are troubled, minds that minds that are that's just troubled, emotions that's troubled, you know, situations that that all it is is just it's troubling, it's just troubling, heart that's troubled, you see, spirit troubled, perplexed, situations in your life, circumstances, events in your life, just all it all it it's doing is amounting to a a lot of trouble. That's what I call trouble waters, trouble waters, trouble waters. You see. And so he says, but though the situations you're going through are troubling, they will not overwhelm you, right? So he says, your troubles will not overwhelm you, okay? And it's when you're overwhelmed, you feel like you're sinking. That's when you feel like you're sinking, you see? Cause, Cause, see, listen to this. Troubles can keep you down until you feel like you're drowning in your troubles. Cause they keep coming, keep coming. You get through one, and something else pop up. You feel like you're drowning in your troubles. But God said, "Hear me, good." But God said, "I will not let deep waters." overwhelm you. I will not let the deep waters overwhelm you. You have to understand this, right? This is what it says to me. God knows how the circumstances, these kind of circumstances can overwhelm you. He knows it, right? But this is what he says when he says, I'm going to be with you. He says his presence is with you to prevent this outcome. He says, I know life can get troubling sometimes. I know you can be in some deep stuff. He says, but my presence is with you to prevent the outcome that trouble is seeking. You see, 
So that's why we value his presence because trouble cannot get the outcome it's looking for when the presence of God is with you, right? That's why he says your trouble will not overwhelm you. Why do, why, why do I feel like my troubles are not going to overwhelm me? It's because God said it. He said it. If I have his presence, if he's with me, the purpose of his presence is to make sure that trouble does not complete his mission. You will not experience the outcome that trouble is trying to create in your life, right? And if that's not enough, he says, when you pass through the fire, help me, when you pass through the fire, right, you will not be burned, right? And then he says, he says, now this scenario is equal to hard trials that come to hurt you. But he says, but, but the hard trials, which is synonymous with what he just said in terms of passing through the fire and not being burned, burned he said the hard trials that come will not hurt you, right? Right? So let's talk about fire. Fire has the potential to do what? Burn or consume you. So the Lord uses this as a metaphor for what a hard trial can possibly feel like in your life. It can hurt you when you're consumed with it, when you're consumed with it, right? Metaphorically, right? So when a hard trial consumes you, when a hard trial consumes you, your mind uh, is mainly impacted, right? So when a hard trial consumes your mind, that's when it becomes hurtful, right? And God knows, hear me. God knows how hurtful a hard trial can be. But then he says, the hard trial will not hurt you, right? So what he's saying again, he's saying that my presence is with you to prevent this outcome. So it's nothing that you can go through, whether it's trials, whether it's troubles, whether it's war, deep waters or fire, nothing you can go through that, that you go through that God's presence can't prevent it from the manifestation of the outcome that it's seeking. You see, when you have God's presence, it prevents outcomes. So how you come out of it? That determines whether or not God's been with you. And I want to talk to people who know that you've gone through a whole lot, but you, the way you came out of that thing is evidence. When, and I tell you, it's the evidence that God was with you because the devil didn't get the outcome he was seeking. Because if it was up to him, you'd have been burnt up in the situation metaphorically. You would have drowned. You should have never made it out of some dilemmas you've gone through. But the fact that you came out, the enemy did not get the outcome he was seeking. And I'm telling you, whoever's listening to me tonight, I'm ready to close. Whatever you're going through, the devil will not get the outcome he's seeking. You're going to shock the enemy as to how you come out of this circumstance. I don't know who I'm talking to. I don't know who I'm talking to, but somebody needs to hear me that the outcome will not be what the devil wants. It will not be what the enemy wants. It will not be what your opposition wants. It will not be what your haters want. I'm telling you, God says, whatever you go through is not going to hurt you. You're not going to drown. You're going to come out of this thing and you will not be overwhelmed. Because we, we talked about when my heart feels overwhelmed, leave me to the rock. I got somebody I can go to. Because he's higher than I. I'm going to deal with that in a minute. Give, give me a chance to, to, to close this thing. He says, now, this is the thing. So three says, let's go to three. Did you get that? So we had four. Let's go to, I'm sorry, let's go to three. He says, for I am the Lord. For I am the Lord. For I am the Lord, your God. Hear me, please, before I close. I am the Lord, your God, Right? So listen to me, listen to me. How does God become, become your God? How does he become your, become your God? How does he become, become your God? I wanna talk about that. How does he, God, how does he become your God, right? Did you get that? All right, 
Let me tell you how he becomes your God. He becomes your God the minute you believe he's Lord. When he, you believe he's Lord, he becomes your God. So three, three, when he says, for I am the Lord your God, he's talking to people who believe that he's Lord. Once you believe he's Lord, he becomes your God. Are you with me? Okay, I want, I want people to know, how does he becomes your God, right? The minute you believe he's Lord, he becomes your God, right? Because listen, Lord, Lord, this title Lord is not just what he calls himself, that's who we believe he is. Well, a lot of people may call him Lord just because just because you call him Lord doesn't believe doesn't say you believe unless you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised his son from the dead. Now, 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 three is talking about you. Verse three, when he says, "For I am the Lord your God," okay, how does he become? Uh, how, do, how does he becomes my God? I want to keep saying this because we have, uh, I elaborate to educate. Remember, I do this purposely. How does he becomes my God? Right? How does he becomes your God? The minute you believe he's Lord, he becomes the Lord your God. Right? Why? Because I believe it. Right? Okay? So the Lord, watch this, verbally depicts his own character as being holy because he says, now I'm not only the Lord your God, I'm the holy God of Israel. I'm holy. Lord help me. I'm a, I'm, I'm gonna leave that alone. Hopefully that speaks for itself because I'm, I'm not trying to keep you long. He says, let me tell you about my character. I am holy. And he depicts his own character as being holy. He described himself as the holy God of Israel, who saves you. My goodness. He's given you the, the description of his relationship between who he is and what he is to you, right? Who he is and who he is to you based on what he does for you, right? So he says, this is the thing. He, listen, he, he discloses his relational responsibility to we, right? Who believe he's Lord, and that is to do what? Save us. That is to save us. So if you're saved, your money didn't do it. Your father didn't do it. Thank God for all that. Nothing you have, nothing that you possess did it. The only one who saved you and the only one who can save you is the holy God of Israel, which you are, we are, we are the modern day Israel, right? Okay, so he's responsible for saving you. So whenever you want to give anybody credit as to who rescued you out of a life of sin, who brought you into the ark of safe, safety, who brought you out of, I mean, the muck in the mall. You can't give nothing or nobody else the credit except God. And if he brought you out of that, what is it that he can't bring you out of? He can bring, and you know how tough it was to get yourself out of situations that only God could bring you out of. And God is saying, listen, I'm the only one. I'm the only one who can save you. Right. So we give him all the credit for that because he declares out of his mouth is that it's out of, out of his mouth that he saved you. He saved me. And not only did he save us, but whenever we find ourselves in a situation, he can rescue us out of that dilemma. All right. OK. Now watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. So. He, dis, he, dis, he, dis, he discloses that he, his, his relational responsibility is to save us, right? So he says, look at this. He says, I will give up Egypt to set you free. I will give up Ethiopia, Ethiopia and Seba. 
I'll give that all up. I'll give that all up to save and set you free. Watch this. This is what he says. I'll give up Egypt. I'll give up Ethiopia. I'll give up Seba just for your freedom. Right? Okay? And he says, listen, I did not give up all of who I could have had. I could have chose Egypt. I could have chose Ethiopia. I could have chose Seba. I could have did that. Okay? But I did not give up all of who I could have had so you could be free to be mine to give up on you by giving you over to what is trying to overwhelm and hurt you. I gave up too much. I could have chose Egypt. I could have chose Seba. I could have chose Ethiopia. There's a whole lot of nations I could have chose. Do you think that I gave all that up? I gave all that up to give up on you and give you over to something to try to take you out and not come through? No, no, I will never give up on you. And I will never give you over to something like that when the very reason I selected you so you could be free to be mine. And I want people to, to say that in your spirit. I want you to say he thought I was worth it. He, he could have saved anybody. He, 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 he could have brought anybody out, but he thought I was, he out of everybody in this world, right? That could have benefited from his presence and his power. He chose me. He thought I was worth it. And if he chose me to be free to be his, he didn't bring me this far to show me otherwise. He brought me out so I can have the freedom to worship him, the freedom to give him glory, the freedom to belong to him. And the reason why I needed freedom because I was in bondage. Egypt had me in bondage. Okay, the modern day Egypt is anything that was holding you in a place mentally, spiritually, physically, whatever it is, that you could not get the, get the freedom needed to be a child of God. But he brought you out of a horrible pit. See, we need to see, we talk about praise, and that's good. We, we talk about all that. We, I think we need to start talking about the pits. I don't have six people that God brought us out of. Because you couldn't get, listen, you couldn't praise until you got out of the pit. When he brought you out of that pit, see, 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 the the praise, some people think praise is about everything except what he brought us out of. My, my praise is real because it's, I praise him for everything, don't get me wrong. But when I think about the pit that he brought me out of, I mean, the pit that I was in, it was deep. But he brought me, when I say he brought me up out, he had to get me up to get me out. And I'm getting ready to, listen, <laughs> your spirits are getting ready to come up. Your, your, your power is ready to go to another level because things got to come up before you get out. That's what he did. He brought, David said he brought me up out of a horrible pit. It was horrible. Set my feet on a rock and established my going. I've been going ever since. And that's what, why the enemy is mad because he can't stop my going. He can't stop my going. Going to another level. Going to another dimension. Going to the next place that God had. I'm, I'm going. I'm going. Hell or high water. You can't stop my going. That's why I praise him, because he can't stop my going. I've been going every since. I want somebody to tell somebody real quick, keep going. Just keep going. Keep going. He didn't bring you out to stop. Keep going. He said, I freed you so you can be mine. Right? So he says this, and I'll let you go. All right? Four says, I will give up whole nations to save your life. Listen. Uh, let me calm down. I gotta let you go. I, I gotta let you go because this thing is really, it, it's 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 in, in my spirit tonight. Let me get on past this. I will give up whole nations to save your life. And no, you know what the Lord is telling somebody tonight. Listen to what He's saying tonight. Listen to what He's saying tonight. This is what He's saying. You never hear me. Hear my voice. You never have to worry about. This is what the Lord's saying. 
you never have to worry about me abandoning you for others. When life gets tough, because I know what I mean to your life. I know I'll, I'll never trade you in. And some of you have been hurt because you thought people would be with you through thick and thin. I'm telling you, people like that have to be willing to give up something so they can hold on to you. Whether it's their selfishness, whether it's their arrogance, whether it's their, their, their selfish way of thinking and perspective, perspective, there are some people who are just not willing to give up what it is that they have that they feel is more valuable than your presence in their lives. And I want to talk to people who are tired of competing. Let me lay that right there, and I'm going to back on up. Off, I'm, you're tired. You, you're tired of competing with things that people feel like they have to hold on to, all right, which is compromising the kind of relationship that they have with you, and you find yourself competing with the things that uh, those who have this kind of mindset are, are not willing to let go. And when you are valuable in some in the lives of, of people, the people that you're connected with, they they will never choose anything except God now over you when they know that the value that you bring to their lives means too much to let you go. And you're competing. You're trying to do everything to hold on to something that you really never had. I don't have two people on that part. You never had it. You never had it. Because the Lord said, I will let, listen, look, this is, look the Lord said, the Lord said, I'll let go nations for you. Nations. I'll, listen, I'll give up nations for you. For your life. That's how bad I want you. I'll give up nations. Do you know how, how, do you, that's the thing. Do you know how much worth you have in, a, in the eyes of God? Nations. He said, I'll give up. I'll give up nations for your life. You see? And when, and when you discover why a, a, people really didn't value and you felt it, but you couldn't figure it out, it's because they was holding on to something that was causing them to discount their, discount your value, I should say, because they felt like you wasn't enough. Whenever a person feel like you're not enough, they got to hold on to something else to compensate for what they feel you don't bring to the table. And I'm telling you, don't, listen, don't ever settle for somebody who treats you like that. Never, because you are enough. Know your value and please never go on sale. Never go on sale. Never disc don't I, I I don't ever put a discount tag on your value. No, don't ever bring your value down because of what somebody's not willing to give up because they feel like you're not enough. And what God says, you are enough for me. I'll give up nations for you. For you. I don't need them. They can go on. I want you. You see? So I want you to see how God values who you are, right? He says, I'll give up nations before I deprive your life of my presence and my protection. You know why? Watch this and I'm gone. He said, because I know what I mean to your life. I want to talk to two people who know that not only God knows, but you know what God means to your life. I read this and almost had tears. I thought, God, you mean too much to me. You, 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 if you let me, if you, if you walk out on me like people, if you abandon me like some folk have done, and I, I, I'm over it, I'm, I, I forget, but you mean too much to my life to walk out, to abandon me. You're my protector, you're my provider, you, you, you're my healer. You're my Lord. You're my God. You, you rescue. Who gonna rescue me if you walk out? Who's gonna heal me if you walk out, God? Who 
who's going who who who's who, who's gonna take care of me? Who's gonna wipe my tears? Who's going who who can do me like you? And that's what I'm trying to tell you. When people value what you bring to their lives, they don't just let just abandon you because they know what you mean to their lives. And some of you are have done everything you can to show that you want to bring meaning into the lives of the people you're connected to. But if you're not valued that way, they will drop you, get in trouble. I mean, get in trouble, get in some deep waters, get into something. I mean, go, go, through, go through trouble, go through the fire. They would abandon you. And that's the most hurtful, I think, outcome that you can ever experience. When you think you're bringing meaning to somebody's life, and they and, and they and they and they respond in a way that they understand that 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 meaningful presence you have in their lives, and you find out otherwise. That's a hard discovery. But God says, I, God said, I'll never do that for you. Do that to you because I know how much I mean to you. I got to close. I know how much I mean to you, right? So He says, I'll give up nations before I deprive your your life of my my presence and my protection. And this is why. And this is why, because you're precious to me, number one. I love you, number two. I give you honor. It's in the text. Read four. Because you are precious to me, because I love you, and I give you honor. God, oh, man. What? <laughs> Look, if you ever find any of these attributes in a relationship that you're currently in or, you, or, or that you enter into, you got something. When somebody can be precious, I don't care, you can be trash to somebody else, but as long as you're precious to that person, they love you and they give you honor. They, they give you honor because they feel you are honorable. You got a solid relationship because they're pattering, they care for you after the example of God. After the example of God. He said, I can't let you go because I love you too much. You're precious to me. And I give you honor. So we're back at five and I close. What did five say? Do not be afraid. Why? Why did why? I'm with you. I'm with you. I ain't going nowhere. I'm right here. I'm with you. Why, why is it that God has to constantly remind us not to be afraid? I'm gonna tell you why. When he says, do not be afraid. I'm with you is because what's making you afraid is seen. It's seen. It's the seen and the unseen, right? The seen can make you totally ob oblivious of the unseen. Like you see the trouble, you see the turmoil, you see the deep waters, you see the issues, but, but what gets you through it is what you don't see. And why is it that God has to remind us that I'm with you? I'm with you. Like, like say for instance, right? I'm walking with you. You walk with me. You have to keep, and I keep telling you, I'm with you. It's like, okay, Bishop, I, I see you. You're right there. What's wrong? Like, I'm, I'm with you. Okay, I know. I see you, right? Because I don't have to keep telling you I'm with you when you physically see me, at least from a physical standpoint. But when you're going through this thing, if you're not conscious of the fact that, that God is unseen, but he's still with you, he has to keep reminding you, I know you don't see me, but I'm with you. You're not in this alone. So what is this? God has to give us a reminder. Like, don't forget, I'm here. I'm here with you. You're not in this alone. And this is what I came to let you know. Hope. Huh? God told me to tell you, hey, hello. I know you see the waters. I know you see the fire. But please don't allow the seen to make you oblivious of the unseen. Hello. That's what verse is saying. Don't be afraid. Don't forget. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. I'm with you. I'm never going anywhere. You are not in this alone. Father, I thank you for this teaching. I thank you for this time that we've gathered. 
I pray that everybody who had an opportunity to hear this teaching was edified. And this is nothing but a reminder that we can't allow what's seen to make us oblivious of what's not seen. And you're just here waving at us saying, hey, I'm with you. Don't be afraid. I know you can't see me, but I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Through your pain, I'm here. Through your losses, I'm here. Through your turmoil, I'm here. Through the fire, the reason why you're not going to get burnt, you're not going to be overwhelmed. I'm here. I'm here. I love you. I love you. You're precious to me. I'll never give up on you. I'll give you honor. You are mine. You belong to me. I know your name. I called you. I'm here. Just a reminder. World is crazy, but don't allow what you see going on in this world cause you to be oblivious to the unseen. Because I came to remind you tonight, don't be afraid. I'm here, which means you are not in this alone. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. I love you. I love you. You can give now if you want to. Anybody get anything out of this message? I pray you did. I pray you did. I pray that you got something out of this. Yeah, you're not alone. You're not. All right. All right. I love every last one of you. I pray that you, listen, go over this word again. You know, I'm going to post it as I always do, but go over this word again, because I'm telling you, you can be looking at what is seen and not know that like the, the cure to your fear is what's not seen, because what's seen is temporal. What's not seen is eternal. And God is saying, hey, don't forget, I'm here. All right. So you can give if, you, if, if you're led to give. Let's give. Um, uh, so a seed. And um, I appreciate you giving in advance. I love every last one of you. And hopefully, Lord willing, I'll talk to you on Saturday at uh, 10 o'clock for um, walking in, the Walking in Leaders Radio broadcast. Love you. Hang in there. You're not in, in this alone. Don't be afraid. For God is with you. God bless. <laughs>